Carrasco came over with Francisco Lindor in the trade from Cleveland two winners ago both had difficult 2021s and both off to great starts in 2022 as are the Mets at nine and four and Carrasco makes his third start of the season. There's the Toyota numbers for Carrasco last night Bassett was the first starting pitcher for the Mets to get a loss so Carrasco ready to start a new win, win streak. Here's your Hyundai starting lineup for the Giants. They've gone with pretty much the same group this entire series. They do switch out the catcher, Kurt Casale, for Joey Bart behind the plate. Brandon Belt had a home run on his birthday yesterday. Today it is Jock Peterson's birthday, and he has had great success playing on his special day. And the Metropolitan Lexus defense, Luis Guillorme at shortstop, his 12th career start. As a, with the Mets at short first this season out in the outfield they're giving Marte an off day good off day for Marte Jankowski out in right and Kenna is back his second start out in left since he went down for missed five games. So an off day for Marte kind of a half off day for Lindor who is DHing today. Mike Yastrzemski getting set to lead off for the Giants who will be heading to Washington for a series over the weekend. Buck Showalter back from a one day medical procedure and good to go. 0 and 1 in his absence. Took three people to replace him. 35 year old Carlos Carrasco set to go. This will be a, a good test for Cookie. He's kept the ball down in his first two starts. This team loves the ball down. A lot of secondary pitches really went to his change up his last start. Mike Ustremski three for 11 in this series. Carrasco's first pitch a fastball inside and we're underway. Ustremski belt and rough for the Giants in the opening inning. Ustremski after a big year last year off to a slow start. Last year hit 25 home runs drove in 71. And he golfs one foul. It's a ball and a strike. Keith mentioned the secondary pitches for Carrasco. Last year, Carrasco threw his fastball 51% of the time. So far this year, through two starts, only 38%. More changeups, more sliders, mixed in the curveball. There's the first slider, and Yastrzemski has to move his feet, two and one. Primarily, the back foot. That's why they call it a back foot <laughs> slider. It's a great term. Three infielders on the right side against Jastrzemski. It's assistant coach Max Scherzer next to Buck Walter. Max was in the mix last yes, night in was. the whole uh, triumvirate. He was making sure that he made his presence felt and Jeremy Hefner even mentioned that after the game that it wasn't just that they had three guys in charge but they had plenty of veterans on the bench who were willing to contribute. The Stremski drops oh. down a perfect bunt and he's aboard to start this game with the Mets shifting is ahead of the count three and one you don't often see that drops the bunt and it's a leadoff hit but it's a leadoff hitter leading off an inning uh, smart play. In fact, it's the best time to bunt. You know you're going to get a fastball down the middle. And you can see uh, Escobar, no chance, and just a matter of getting it by Carrasco. That's how you do it. You don't run up on the ball. You don't show late. You just turn around and direct the ball where you want it to go. I mean, it's almost like you're sacrificing because if you get it in the right spot, you right. can walk to first base. There's Brandon Belt. Homeward last night hit one in the second deck in right field. Yeah, he really belted that one. Oh, nice. <laughs> really cinched it. He's been in the car for like three hours. He's been thinking about it. The hero was a little slow going getting home last night, Keith. It was. A lot of uh, a lot of road work. The cross island was a mess. Um, I didn't turn my ways on. My mistake. My bad. And then I get on the LIE. You can forget about the LIE. <laughs> Just like throw a, a neutron bomb on it. Well, that would actually keep the road intact, but <laughs> eliminate all the people. They need to have no traffic. <laughs> One and two to belt. <laughs> For 
Mikey Stremski the seventh bunt hit of his career is first this year. So it was tough getting home last night and of course you had a short night's sleep and you're back here today was the traffic better this morning. Uh, it was actually a lot of uh, came in I started out at 930 and it was behind the traffic it wasn't bad. A lot of volume but it moved. Still had to dodge the potholes. And there is the back foot slider by Carrasco the strikeout belt for the first out of the day. I'd love to put you in a traffic helicopter one of these days Keith. You do a great job up there doing commentary. It's more like a cutter than a slider on belt. But a good spot. That's what you need to get from the island here helicopter just landed right on top of the building here. It would be a regular Tom Kaminsky. Matt Ward. <laughs> Darren Ruff DHing today, one for eight in this series. Off to a slow start. Just seven for 42 to begin the year. Stremski at first and one out. Three infielders on the left side against Ruff. Fastball dents the inside corner in its own two. Now Ruff has been really, really struggling at the plate. The Mets have had their way with him. It's one hit. Broke up Max, Max Scherzer's no hit bid. And, and you mentioned, I was watching, it was a good pitch. He hit a good pitch. Only hit Scherzer allowed in his seven innings last night. Or two nights ago. Off the plate to Ruff, and it's one and two. Kept losing track of what day it is. Yeah. We're going to Arizona, right? Three hour time difference. We're not on the plane yet. I see Ronnie's got his desert garb on. This, He's uh, ready. There's a, there's a few things that happen before you and I get on the plane. Were you on the list, Ron? <laughs> 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 well, you know, it's been a long time since any of us in the broadcasting uh, end of things have been on the team charter. 2019 was the last time that that happened. Wow. So, you know, everybody's trying to get back up to speed. But I think by the time we get up into the air, everything will be squared away. Check swing by Ruff. Did he go? He did not. Trip Gibson with the call at first, and it's two and two. Coming into the day through his first two starts, the righties are hitting just 100. Against Carrasco. And he gets a looking at a changeup. Beautifully executed pitch by Carrasco. Knees in black on the inside corner, and he's got back to back strikeouts. Well, it's a nice combination fastball away and then changeup that just dents the inside corner. Beautiful using both sides of the plate from Carrasco. So after the leadoff bunt hit, back to back strikeouts for Cookie, who struck out eight in five innings. Against the Diamondbacks on Saturday. So here's Jock Peterson celebrating his 30th birthday today. Listen to these numbers on his birthday in his career 11 for 20 with three home runs. He's a 550 hitter on his birthday. It's one into the shift. Guillaume sidling to his left. Throws out Peterson. No birthday wishes yet. And Carrasco works around the leadoff hit. Mets come to bat against Anthony DiScofani with no score. Toward the corner, White reaching out, and it's out of here! A two-run homer for Sean Estes! The first home run by a Mets pitcher in better than three years. A two-run shot over the retired numbers in left field, and the Mets now have a three-to-nothing lead. Take that, Roger Clemens. We were talking about it last night. Sean Estes, who's broadcasting for the Giants, said that to Dave Fleming. That was something else. Didn't hit Clemens with a pitch, but he hit him where it hurts. I like your editorializing there oh, at the end. Oh, he gave him a little shot. <laughs> he did. <laughs> well, you know, Roger was number one on the Mets' enemies list back in those days. Anthony DiSclefani on the mound for the Giants today. We'll find him. He's there somewhere. There he is. <laughs> Facing Brandon Nimmo is two for seven in this series. 
Last year and this year, his last 33 starts, Di Scalfani, the San Francisco Giants are 23 and 10 in his starts. He has become a slider master. Throws his fastball less than 50% of the time. Plenty of sliders. And goes away with a sinker, and it's two and one. Well, those are his numbers this year. Di Sclafani had a career year last year when he went 13 and 7 with a 3.17 ERA and 31 starts in his first year with the Giants. He sells the changeup by and it's 3 and 1. Francisco Lindor hitting second today and McNeil third. It's kind of a short arm. Yeah, absolutely. Got under his changeup there. And that one's called a strike by Alfonso Marquez. Nimmo was in full sprint toward first base. Marquez calling the balls and strikes. Trip Gibson, Ramon De Jesus, Clint Von Drack have the bases. Nimmo was on base three times last night with two singles and a walk. And he gets the breaking ball, hits it past the mound. Crawford on the charge. And gets Nimmo by a stride, one away. Here's your Geico Mets starting lineup. Francisco Lindor becomes the sixth different Mets DH this year. That'll give Luis Guillorme a start at short. Travis Jankowski giving Starling Marte a day off in right field. The H is a rover spot for Buck Showalter. Well, how about these numbers for Lindor as a DH? He's only done it in 11 games in his career, but in those 11 games, he's hitting 447 with six home runs and 12 RBI. So he appreciates getting off his feet defensively. Look at those zapatos. They're very orange. And Lindor cracks one in the air deep toward the right field corner. Gone if it stays fair, and it's out of here. Francisco Lindor, DH Deluxe, into the Coca Cola corner to give the Mets the early 1 0 lead. Fourth of the year for Lindor. Well, Lindor has tightened up his swing. Last year he got very long, and now he's getting the barrel through. And down and in for him here is a good is right in his wheelhouse. So, had a lot of plate, and he takes over the team lead in home runs. That is the Mets' first home run in this series. The giant pitchers had gone 308 plate appearances over nine games without allowing a home run before Lindor connected. And that Mets home run means City will donate $2,000 to No Kid Hungry to help buy childhood hunger. Now more than ever, kids across America need our help. They've only allowed four total home runs now. 0 oh 2 now to McNeil, who's 1 for 9 in this series. Mets' last home run came Sunday against the Diamondbacks when Pete Alonso went deep. Only one team was allowed less. Well, it was, we talked about it in spring for Lindor that it was imperative that, well, not imperative, but important that he got off to a good start and just let last year roll to the wayside. And he has. Hooked on the ground into the shift, and Estrada throws out McNeil two out. And we're going to see the home run again from the side. Good balance. Well, left handers just seem to naturally drop that that barrel down, don't they, Ron? That ball down in it. You can see right there, mid thigh, but inner half out over enough to extend the arms. And that's a he belted it. Chest bump will be scary. No, no, don't do that chest stuff too hard now. It can hurt someone. So now Alonzo, three hits yesterday for Pete. Just got a piece of the slider, nothing to want. And 
the giant defense. Casali behind the plays have been kind of back and forth, have alternating there. Crawford, of course, made a beautiful backhand to end the game last night in that double play off that smash off the bat of Marte. And uh, the same outfielders out there. Peterson on his birthday, of course. I mean the one that wasn't a double play? That one? That's right, it wasn't a double play. Excuse me, it got overturned. Well, it was, the game was over and then it wasn't over. Yes, they actually announced it on the, uh, on my iPad that it said a final. I showed Ronnie. <laughs> Remind me of the 86 World Series. Congratulations, Boston Red Sox. <laughs> yeah. And Dee Sclafani with sliders strikes out Alonzo to end the inning, but Francisco Lindor gets the Mets off to a fast start. 1 0 after 1. The game is Broden from White House, Ohio. Go to SNY.TV slash CHR to enter. Good luck, Broden. White House is anywhere near where Chris Bassett is from. Mm. Brandon Crawford leads off for the Giants. Pete Carrasco with a 1 0 lead. Crawford's driven in three runs with three hits in this series. Yeah, he's looked good at the plate. He's impressed me. I've been, we all, I know about his glove. I've been watching him swing the bat this series. Oh, and he gets hit in the leg by the pitch, and he'll go to first base. First batter Carrasco has hit this year. Almost hit Yastrzemski to lead off the game, and it's the old back foot slider, and it got the front foot. So for the second straight inning, the Giants have the leadoff man on. And another warm hand for Wilmer Flores as he comes to bat. Well, wouldn't you? Well, you know, every player gets a nice reception when he first comes back to his old haunts. Very few players continue to get that warm reception every appearance they make. He's but beloved. Robert, well, he's an exception. Yeah. I mean, I remember even when uh, when Piazza came back as a Padre in 2005. 2005, right? Yeah. Um, he got an enormous thunderous ovation, and then he hit a home run. And the second at bat, he got a really nice ovation, and he hit another home run. And then the third at bat, it was a little more subdued, <laughs> and he almost hit a third one. He hit one to the warning track. Had to be 06 though, didn't it? I mean, we were doing the game. 06. Well, I, rem I remember the home run he hit in San Diego. Line toward the gap in right center by Flores. That's down for a base hit. Jankowski gets over to play it on a hop. And so the Giants have two men on. Wilmer's second hit in the series. Wilmer goes with this pitch nicely. Ball down and away. Carrasco right now fell behind. That's right down the outer half, maybe the middle. Good hitting by Wilmer. Remember yesterday's game when they had the big inning, scored three runs. Wilmer hit one between first and second, a bullet mm -hmm. as well. So the first two aboard for the Giants in the second. And there is Tyro Estrada, who's gone three for 11 in this series. Estrada getting all the reps in second base in this series with Tommy Lestella out of the lineup. Mets out the corners in looking for a bunt, but there's no hint of a bunt from Estrada. I love this angle here. The ball away, the further the ball away, the, the more the ball has to go deeper over the plate. Wilmer, if you're going to pull it, you got to go out in front of the plate and get it to get that barrel angle out there. That's a great shot. Alonzo and Escobar, who were pinched in on the first pitch, backed up a little more for the second one. And Estrada hits one toward the hole, and that's going to sneak through for a base hit. Crawford getting a green line at third. Jankowski's throw to the plate is not in time, and the game is tied. As Tyro Estrada found the hole, and he singles in Crawford, and it's one to one. I don't understand the defensive play by the Mets here. Estrada, the whole game, look at the second baseman that knee off the middle. The whole series, Estrada has been inside out of. And boy, I mean, I'm up here watching. I got to shade him the opposite field on the infield. And he's a line drive hitter. And Crawford gets a good jump there. He knows the ball is on the ground. I mean, for the Giants, jump out in front again. Lindor. It's 1 1. Jeez, I, you know, I hang in there. Thanks for the waves. 
Here's Steven Duggar, the center fielder, two for 11 in the series. First pitch curveball down from Carrasco. So another point here, folks. The runner did not advance to third base because Jankowski threw a nice one hop throw strong, but hit the cutoff man, froze the runner at second base. Fouled off one and one. Third base coach Mike Hallberg with lots of signs for Duggar. Hallberg replaced Ron Wotus, who had coached third for many years for the Giants. Slider pulled foul and it's one and two. Before then it was Tim Flannery. That's right. Was there for a long time. That was Boach's man. Yep. From San Diego days. Did a little coaching, Flannery. Did a little singing. Can do it all. Renaissance He's a man. Good guy. Good guy. Like Tim. And yep. now some concern about Duggar. After fouling that last ball off, the athletic trainer's coming out along with Gabe Kapler to see if he's okay. I don't like the body language, the expression on the face. Is that uh, an oblique? It feels like that's. Oh. You know, that's you get an oblique. Oh man, you know he's coming you, out. That is, it's eight weeks. That is an injury you don't want. We don't know. Well, if that's what it is, You're right? We'll see. I mean, he took that big swing and topped that ball foul, and immediately there was concern in the dugout. You can see him grab his side, but they obviously saw something. Well, they've only got a four man bench. Well, and they really don't have another center fielder. Oh, there's there it is. There it is. Yep. Yep. Grabbed it. Yep. Oh, man. I don't know if that's something he had been struggling with before. He's been playing every day. Giants lose two players in this series. I think it's Mauricio Dubon. So Dubon will pick up the at bat if it winds up being a strikeout it would be charged to Duggar because he inherits the at bat with two strikes. Is this considered a pinch hit here or no? It is a pinch hit. However if um, if it's a strikeout Dubon will not have a plate appearance. If he gets a base hit it'll be right Dubon's. Okay. Got you, Monsieur. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> Going all French on us? Ronnie was good with it. But <laughs> nice, nice French pronunciation. Oh. And Dubon bunts and misses for strike three. Did he realize he had two strikes he, when he came to bat? He really must not have wow. known. So that is a strikeout. It goes against Duggar's record. And that's wow. the first out of the inning. Wow. Not good. Well, these teams have gotten off to a quick start, but they're not perfect. I don't oh. know how you explain that. I just didn't know. I don't know where he was when he was summoned to pinch hit. But the information about the count must have eluded him. So that helps out Carrasco gets him his first out of the inning. You can tell that it's not a great moment because no one on the bench is even looking at him. Kurt Casale one for two in this series. Start of the uh, second game of the doubleheader on Tuesday. So is Dubon going to center field? Is, is he mm, play the outfield? Oh, he's an infield. Outstanding infield. Got Slater who can play the outfield. He could play center, so could you Stremsky. I don't know how much. Yeah, the Bonds played some center field. Okay. 
sure that when he's in the outfield, he will know exactly how many outs there are and what the count is. Love these April day games. Club day games, period. Good crowd. You could put Estrada in the outfield and bring Dubon and play second base. Yeah, Dubon's played 73 games in the center field. Good sinker by Carrasco, and it's one two to Casale. So he has plenty of experience out there. In fact, he's played more games in center field than he has any position in the major league. Mm -hmm. That's Two and two to Casale with Yastrzemski on deck. Flores at second, not fast. Estrada at first. And the changeup taken down, full count. A lot of deeper counts uh, for Carrasco here this afternoon than his first two starts. He's having trouble with getting his breaking ball over early. He's also facing a much better lineup than the one he faced last time out against Arizona. Struck out eight and five scoreless innings in that start. Three and two with one out. And Casale pops it up into shallow center. Nimmo looking through the sunglasses. Puts it away, two out. So Casale retired. We're checking out the sky. It's not a strictly sunny day, but there is high cloudiness and glare. Carlos Carrasco, you see the number 21 he wears at the back of his hat. Only players who have won the Roberto Clemente Award are able to wear that number 21. I think there are nine of them active right now. Did you notice what Canna did on that routine fly ball to center field? He ran from his position all the way over. He was around 30 feet from Nemo when he made the catch because everybody's been having difficulty seeing the ball, the high sky. Good hustle. Jastrzemski taking low and in with the slider. Well, it's another windy day. The wind has changed directions. It's blowing out today at 22 miles an hour. So you combine that with the glare, and the conditions have not been easy for any of the fielders in this series. I was talking to Francisco Lindor today, and he was reiterating that pop up in the first game of the doubleheader on Tuesday that he basically didn't see until it was in his glove. Mm. See that flag so heavily whipped that it's wrapped around the pole. Jastrzemski had a bunt hit his first time up. Fouls back a high fastball, two and one. Lindor, after his home run, came over to McCann and they started. Looking at video together, and they've been on that iPad, which is preloaded by Major League Baseball. You know, can't get unauthorized sites on there. It's just video that they can access about different pitchers, different hitters. Grounded into the shift by Yastrzemski, and McNeil throws him out to end the inning. So the Giants get a run, but Carrasco holds firm. 1 1 game in the second at City Field. Sliders, the Mets so far this season have certainly been. Productive on the breaking ball, and nobody more than Eduardo Escobar, who leads off against De Sclafani. Escobar's OPS against breaking balls this year is 2,036. There's Mauricio <laughs> Dubon now playing center field. 2,036. And he cranks oh. this one to right field. Back goes Yastrzemski near the wall. It's out of here. Eduardo Escobar deposits one. And the Mets are back in front. First home run is a New York Met for Eduardo Escobar, and the Mets lead it two to one. Could be wrong, Keith, but I thought this was a changeup from Di Sclafani. We'll see. Right up and down the middle. And Escobar has turned it on here in this series. Got off to a sluggish start, but now starting to heat up. Leads the league in doubles with seven, and now his first Mets home run. And the second in the first five batters for the Mets today against Di Scafani, <laughs> who had not allowed a home run in his first two starts. Escobar is eight for his last 14. Here's Mark Canna. And he hits one up the middle. That's a base hit. 
So Canna, who returned to action last night, had a base at his last time up to drive it a run. He has one his first time up today. Well, change up down the middle, stays back. And that's one where you can kind of, okay, it's coming in as a change up, a little bit of an uppercut swing, not much, because it's right there to hit out of the ballpark. It's 42nd at bat as a Met, first home run. Home run hitters embrace, and it's two to one. There's Travis Jankowski getting the start at right field today, and he slaps one to the left side on the backhand. Crawford sidearms to second and gets the force. The third baseman, Wilmer Flores, was playing about 70 feet from home plate against Jankowski. And he tried to go and hit it past Wilmer, but there was Crawford, the gold glover, to sweep it up and get a force. Carl Crawford's got a good backhand, doesn't he? Sure hands, very natural. That's why he's got four gold gloves. Keep an eye on Jankowski at first. Good, good time for Jankowski to try to steal the pillow. It's Luis Guillorme getting the start at shortstop today. Sixth game already that Guillorme started out of the first 14. Oh. First time he started at shortstop with Lindor DHing today. Mm. He asked for time, and I don't think time was granted, was it? No, I heard the umpire say heard, something. Okay, I didn't see his hands go up though. It's too late. Well, I mean, if if he doesn't grant time and Disclafani stops like that, it's a ball. Kowski, two steals. He's not been caught. Last night in the eighth inning, that's had first and third and two out. They were down. Five to one, and Starling Marte tried to steal second and was caught to end the inning. Now, of course, Buck Showalter wasn't here yesterday. Jankowski runs and Guillaume on the hit and run play takes run through the hole, and Jankowski will race to third. Beautifully executed. When you've got that left side of the infield wide open. A hit and run though, the shortstop has to vacate. You see Crawford, Crawford vacate even more. And the Mets give the Giants a little bit of their own medicine. Good pitch to hit and run to sinker down and away. Place it right in that hole. Perfect hitter to do it with two. A guy who makes good contact in Guillaume, and the Mets executed perfectly to put runners at the corners. This season, Di Stefani in nine and two thirds innings pitched has given up 16 hits. Mm. He has been good with runners in scoring position, though. They're just one for 11 against him through his first two starts, and he's got his first runner in scoring position today facing Nito, who flies one along the right field line. Yastrzemski right near the line catches it in fair territory, tagging Jankowski. He comes in to score, and it's three to one New York. So Nito first pitch swinging delivers his first run batted into the season and the Mets have scored twice here in the second to go up three to one. Well the Mets with the hit and run make it happen. I think we got a little bit of the old school in our manager don't we. Oh, but very seldom do you see hit and run. I love the hit and run. And the Mets have been driving those runners in. 15 out of 20 now this mm. year, driving in a runner from third with less than two out, which is extraordinary. Giorme at first with two out. And Nimmo gets tied up on the slider. Anyway, going back to Marte last night, after the game, Marte said he felt as though he always has the green light and that it was a good play because he was trying to get into scoring position. I asked Buck about it today whether he felt comfortable with that and I thought he had an interesting answer. Yeah he did. He, he said listen uh, we're talking about one of the preeminent base stealers in the game. Doesn't get thrown out. Uh, gets thrown out very rarely. So I don't want to take away his aggressiveness speaking as Buck and I don't want to take away his feel for the game. But he finished it by saying but it could be a life lesson there last uh, learned last night. And he said I don't think it'll happen again. That's right. So he, he expressed both sides of the coin, wanting Marte to retain his aggressiveness, but also you know, understand the situation. 
I thought Buck said something I've never heard a manager say before. He said, I love my players to have a feel for the game. I don't want to take that away from them. But remember, sometimes the feel for the game is to do nothing. I thought that was interesting. Making a play by standing pat. <laughs> Kispofani is really sprinkling, uh, not sprinkling, and using his curveball against Nemo. Well, that's been his uh, project this year to throw a better curveball. Nemo flies one out to left, and Peterson drifts over. That retires the side, but the Mets cash a pair. Escobar with the Mets' second home run of the day, his first home run as a Met. Eduardo Escobar crunches one, and the Mets leave 3 1 after two tickets, unlock offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Brandon Belt up for the second time, struck out his first time up. One of three strikeouts for Carlos Carrasco over the first two innings. Cookie given the lead for the second time now. And Belt grounds one into the shift. Mm. Alonzo lets it go. Carrasco covers. Nicely handled by McNeil. Carrasco will stumble at the bag, but he's okay. A 4 1 put out for the first out. Yeah, we don't need any. Uh Plays like that with stretches with his calf that he injured last year. A little high in the throw. Not really. But he caught it right. Oh. He caught it right in the palm and it ran up the glove. Watch this. Snow cone. Hold on. Like it was a Sesta in a high lie. It was trying to run right out of there. So Belt retired one out and now Darren Ruff who took a call third strike his first time up. Don't expect Ruff to swing at the first pitch. <laughs> oh he swung at the first pitch. Flies it out to right center and Nemo runs it down two out. Less than 10 percent of the time this year Ruff has swung at the first pitch. That's why he doesn't swing at the first pitch. No he hit that ball pretty good. Just lying in wait. <laughs> Can't become predictable. Well, you you know you were a guy who always took the first pitch your first time up. First time up. The, the and if I was red hot though, man, a man in scoring position, oh, Gare, come out of the weeds, never so, see me. But you know, Nimmo has <laughs> developed that way too. A guy who you know you think of as always taking pitches right. early in the count, but in RBI situations, he'll go up there swinging. You sure. know that entire Cardinals team was like that from the '84 to '87. They uh, took the first pitch the first time through. Jack Peterson who grounded out his first time up and he takes a fastball for a strike. Jack Clark would take the first pitch first time through but don't <laughs> anyone else on the bags no chance. He never got cheated did he. Oh God. Hellacious swing. Well in a lineup of excuse me ping hitters. No. Oh don't say that. <laughs> Willie McGee was not a ping hitter. But they weren't power hitters. Gap guy. Tommy uh, was it, not took, a ping took hitter. Advantage Tommy Hur was not a ping hitter. He was a doubles hitter. Yeah, took advantage of the astroturf and got a lot of doubles up the gap. Vin, Vince Coleman was the closest thing to it. He could chop that ball on the turf. Well, he had the speed to use that, right? Peterson flies one out to center and Nimmo figures it out and makes the catch. And it's a quick inning for Carrasco. He threw just six pitches. 3 1 mess. A lot of water in this town. You ever think about that? Bruce yeah. Lee, B water. Francisco Lindor has already got a home run today as a DH. And he takes the first pitch slider for a strike from Anthony D. Scalfani. Lindor hit one in the second deck in right field for his fourth home run of the year, his seventh as a designated hitter in only 12 games. Maybe more of this on top. Scofani had not allowed a home run through his first two starts. He gave up two to the first five batters today. And that one goes to the backstop. A check swing and he held in time one and two. Smart play by Casalva. He went chasing after yes. that ball before the call was made by the third base umpire just in case. There was also a, a nice way of doing business by the home plate umpire who act, asked for it straight away. That curveball from Di Scalfani. 
This Buffani said from the day the season ended last year, he started working on that curveball. He's thrown it about 10% of the time this year. It's a pitch that he just has never been able to master before. If you look at his season last year and you gave the numbers, ERA just a, a little bit over three. If you take away the Dodgers starts, he had three of the most hellacious starts against the Dodgers, or he would have been in the low twos. Well, Di Scalfani, a Jersey kid who's never beaten the Mets, but he's only pitched in this ballpark once, and he was great that day back in 2019 with the Reds. Lindor flies one to left center right in the gap and it drops for a base hit. Gets by Peterson and then Duggar mishandles oh. it. Lindor thought about taking the extra base, but thinks better of it. And Lindor is two for two. A little bit of a comedy out there with Peterson and Duggar, but Lindor went halfway and came back. No, Lindor is hot. Swinging the bat good. I said Duggar, it's Dubon in center field. Duggar, of course, left with an injury. Little slider in, inside out a little bit. Nice little line drive. Thinking about it and said, I don't think I'll try it. Let's see if he tries to steal, steal a base. So the Mets got the leadoff man on in the third. Here's McNeil who grounded out his first time up. Scalfani buries a slider for ball one. Boy, look at the left side of the infield. Crawford way over on the other side. You're talking about the hit and run uh, with Guillaume. Uh, McNeil's another guy that handles the bat. That is just sitting there saying first and third. And McNeil cracks one to deep right center. Back goes Yastrzemski near the wall. It's off the fence. Lindor on his way to third is going to be waved home. Now stopped by Cora. Cora was waving him and then stopped him at the last moment. McNeil barely missed the Mets' third home run of the day. He'll settle for a long double. I think McNeil thought he had it out of the ballpark there. It's 380 where, where he hit it. That's a poke. Fastball out over the plate. He thought he had it, but that's a that's a poke right there. Top of the wall. <laughs> McNeil even gets angry at a hit. A hit. A double. Giants going to bring their infield most of the way in. Scary proposition with Alonzo at the plate. Pete struck out his first time up. All steady diet of sliders his first at bat. Now they're coming in first pitch. Rounded to short and Crawford will hold the runner. And throw out Alonzo one away. That's just good hands. And we talked about it earlier. Look at that. His backhand is spectacular. He can pick it. Jeez. They don't that give is, out the goal for nothing. That's the fourth backhand that he's made in this series. And this one was when he's halfway was a bullet right at him. And that's just good hands. In between hop as well. He did a little stare down with Lindor. Uh, make sure Francisco didn't break on the throw. So one out, the infield will stay in for Escobar, who cranked his first home run as a Met in his first time up today. And the slider stopped by Casali. Good block. Ball one. Well, when you're halfway, you got to be set. He just look at he didn't bring his glove up. He just some guys are just natural and you know he's a four time gold glover that's why he just got he's natural at that position he'd be natural at second base he'd be natural at third. Rope watching Johnny the master do that. Uh, no that's, that's probably before his before time. before his time. I think even your rebates Rich, before his Richard time. Really no, Richard really right? would be probably the shortstop when he was growing up in Pleasanton. Escobar makes the curveball and grounds one foul. Two and one. Oh man. Barford holding his hat to his ear because he's got the pitch comm device in there trying to hear the signs. 
Everybody's having a little trouble with the volume when the crowds get loud. New technology. London calling. At least he didn't grab his shoe like Maxwell Smart. to Escobar and it's three and one Marcana on deck. Interesting that Lindor did not break home on that ground ball with the infield. You got to call the infield right now in with one out. It's got to be a contact. You got to break on contact. I don't think he gives in here despite being behind. Right hand hitter on deck. Escobar oh. drives that one down the line toward the corner. Foul. Mm, just barely missed. Another extra base hit. Escobar has found it. He has come out of the shadows and has found his stroke. He is swinging a hot bat. I think that was another changeup. That's pretty brave after giving up a home run on a changeup to Escobar. Escobar off to a great start. Third in the league in on base percentage. Against type, he's run a ton of walks early this year. 11 walks already. Has never walked more than 52 times in a year. I think he drew the walks, Gary, because he wasn't really fine-tuned, and he was fouling off pitches that he had that he should have hit. And, but now he is oh, like a laser beam. He's on it. Stefani with a big pitch to make here. And Escobar strikes out on the back foot slider. Nicely done by Di Scalfani for the second out. Good pitch, tough pitch to lay off. That's his second strikeout and none bigger in a game where the Mets are already up by two runs. Interesting how the catcher moves outside Casale. Where, watch where it ends up. Now, did he want a backdoor slider? No, he just threw, threw it as hard as he could, Keith. So two out and it's left to Mark Canna who had a base it up the middle his first time up. That's a second and third and nobody out. And Canna lines a base hit and that'll bring in two. Lindor scores McNeil right behind him. Mark Canna picks up his teammates with a two out two run single and it's five to one New York. That's a big hit. First ball, fastball hitting. Those two out RBIs are killers. Canna continues to be productive and hot. Now five for ten with runners in scoring position. Nicely done. No one has scored more runs with two outs than this Mets team. There's Jankowski. He takes a slider for a strike. Mets have now scored 31 two out runs. And they've given up only 11 <laughs> two out runs. And I've got to say, I am just pleased the Mets have a fine third base coach. I know I said it more than a few times, but I just can't say it enough. Joey Cora is a fabulous third base coach. Aggressive. You need an aggressive third base coach. You know, it's interesting about these Clefani. He tried to pitch Canna just like he pitched Alonzo. Get that first fastball in inside and then work the slider, but he never got to it because Canna handled it to left. That's one thing we've seen with Canna early is that he handles that inside pitch well. He handles it, Gary, and he also was watching the at bat to Alonzo. Had to be. He hits the ball the other field too. Yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. Two strike approach. Professional hitter. You got a lot of professionals on this team. And you know, Ken has got power. He hasn't gotten to yeah. it yet yeah. this year. It's been all singles, but he has put the ball in play and he's hit it. He's hit the ball hard. And yeah, he's come from Oakland too. That's not a small ballpark. One and two to Jankowski. And Travis pops one up. Wilma Flores waits for it to come down. That retires the side, but Canna's two out, two run hit extends the Mets lead 5 1 after three. Three hits last night, needs one for 3,000, just struck out in his second and bat against Jordan Montgomery. 
Rangers turned a triple play but it's more comfort they lost their fifth in a row they're two and nine after spending all that money in the offseason. Texas is two and nine Cincinnati's two and eleven. Yeah but the difference is the Reds aren't that, trying. That's right. And the, the Rangers went out and they spent a lot of money to bring in Marcus Simeon to bring in Corey Seager. Simeon's hitting the buck seventy four. Seager's getting walk with the bases loaded. Only <laughs> <laughs> two to Crawford who was hit by a pitch and scored the Giants run in the second. So Carlos Carrasco now with a four run lead after the Mets scored in each of the first three innings. Flores and Estrada to follow after Crawford here in the fourth. It's time for your Spectrum Mobile high speed pitch. It's close. Pretty good at 35 years old to win that, isn't it? It's almost like he has a new lease on life this year. Yeah. Last year, hamstrung for the first half of the season, elbow barking when he came back, got that elbow cleaned up when the season was over, and he has not felt better in years. And you can see it in his pitching as he strikes out Crawford with the slider, and that's the fourth strikeout for Carrasco. He's now retired seven in a row. Backdoor slider. Yeah, there's a purpose. To what he's doing now. There's a little extra on every pitch. Hey, he just didn't have this career he had in Cleveland, uh, you know, by <laughs> yeah. picking rabbits out, out of his hat. Out of nowhere. You know, he this kid, this guy can pitch. He stays healthy, he's gonna be effective. 89 big league wins in his career. And he runs one inside and low to Flores ball one. Walmer lined a base hit to right center his first time, two for nine in the series. It is amazing though when you think back to the trade two winners ago. With the Mets sending Ahmed Rosario and Andres Jimenez to, to Cleveland to pick up these two stars in Lindor and Carrasco. And you know Lindor had a decent second half last year, but you didn't see the best of either one of them. And now you're seeing the best of both of them. And it's Remarkable that the Mets were able to pull off that deal. Rounded into the shift and overcomes Guillaume to get it. Easily throws out Flores, two out. And Carrasco's now retired eight straight. It's not only that they were good players, Gary, they were winning players. That team was going to the playoffs every year. I think he just mentioned Guillaume, and I think another a good quality of Buck Showalter as a manager. Here we are in the uh, what 13th game of the season is that what it is 14th yeah. uh, and he is playing a lot of guys are getting activity and that's important. And Buck stressed that in spring training with the DH you got you can't let your players rot on the bench mm. now and I've got to find a way to get them in early and make them feel a part. Well, he said if, if I don't play a guy for two weeks how do I expect him to come off the bench and get a big hit. But I will say many managers say that very few do it. Well you have to have the confidence in your people and in your ability to get the most out of each player. Yeah. And I think also there have been such advances in sports science to understand what rest does for players that I think it just plays into what Buck's talking about. Kind of pulls in the fly ball hit by Estrada, and Carrasco has hit his stride. He's retired nine in a row. He's a 5-1 in the fourth. Pre and post game shows and all SNY programming anytime, anywhere, on any device with an in market TV provider subscription. The SNY app, scan the code and download now. Luis Giorme had a hit and run single in the Mets' two run second inning. Still hard to uh, recognize that man without the beard. He says he's growing it back. What? Yeah, he said I shaved it and now it'll do what it'll do. Already got a couple of days growth on there. I was going to say he might be one of those guys. You know, certain ball players they can grow a beard in about three days. Oh, I uh, I <laughs> bet you he's been getting it in the clubhouse. I'm getting needled. What do you think Brian Wilson looks like these days? Oh, I mean, he had the most famous of the massive beards during his heyday. There it is. And that uh, that that that's a challenger right there. Might see that again before long. Yorme slices one toward the left field line. Peterson getting over though and makes the catch. 
Houston got a nice break on that ball working away from him. And that's the first out. You know we. Um, we saw Diorme execute that hit and run so well the first time up. And Keith, you talk all the time about how much you love the hit and run. What is it about the hit and run that makes it a special play for you? Look at the Mets just chiseled out a run there, the third run of the game uh, on a hit and run. They set up first and third. It, it puts the pressure on the defense. It's it, it's it's invigorating too. As much as it is fun to watch up here in the booth, and I'm sure the fans love it because it's an exciting play. It's just as exciting on that bench. It's electrifying when you do the little things, and those are the little things, and 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 you're able to do them, and that's what gets the ball rolling as as a team unit. And you start doing those things, and it, it's exciting, just as exciting on that dug, in that dugout as it is for the fans out here and us up here. Now the counterpoint and the reason why the hit and run has fallen out of favor in an era where there's so much swinging and missing in the game mm -hmm. it's a play that can backfire but you got to know your personnel yeah. and the Mets have like I said McNeil can hit and run Guillaume can hit and run and Jankowski can hit and run they they go that way naturally so how about a game that is wedded to the numbers the analytics and shifting where the ball is supposed to be going you're doing the opposite you're making them come out of the shift. That's a good thing. I think you have to pick your spot with the pitchers you do it against too, right? Oh, I agree. Not like Rodon last night. It would be hard to play him run against. These Cofani throws a lot of strikes. I mean, you can see by his hits to innings pitched, the Gary, ball is going to be in play. Gary, the, the, the way the Giants have been playing the defense with with Crawford, left hand hitters and Crawford up the middle, they're leaving that whole left side of the infield open for the hit and run. It's just begging for you, to please. And first and third, the pitchers in trouble. A sacrifice fly to drive in his first run of the season his first time. No, there was a time when that was a big part of the game, and defensively as a pitcher, you would try to counter that, knowing that a guy like Giorme is up and the hit and run could be on because you had some speed on the bases, you were gonna throw in, try to jam him instead so he wouldn't be able to work the ball away or be more difficult. You know, goes down swinging on the slider, and that's three strikeouts for Di Scalfani. How about as a as a hitter in terms of how it affects you mentally to get a hit run sign? Do you do, does a hitter look at it as praise from the manager that he believes in his ability to make contact to play hit run? No, I I don't think it's that. I think you have a job to do. You've got to execute. It makes you more focused on the pitch out of the hand, and you've got to swing. Wherever that pitch is, you have got to, you've got to put it in play. You can't leave your your base runner out there stranded, and it makes mm. you focus more. Nemo is another guy that can hit and run. The Mets, the Mets have a personnel in the, in their lineup where they can do this a lot. Mm. Nemo rolls over one down to Belt. He's Clefani covers, and he's got a one-two-three inning. First time the Mets have failed to score today. We've played four. Carrasco back to the mound up five to one. There's baseball to be played. Lots of kids in the stands. And enjoying watching the Mets today. A hot dog, no bun. It's going low carb early. Whoa. We see a Dubon not bunting on the first pitch, takes a strike. <laughs> Dubon entered this game in the second inning when Steven Duggar left. With what looked like an oblique injury, he inherited a one and two count and apparently didn't know that. Tried to bunt on the first pitch and struck out. Looped in the air to shallow right, coming on Jankowski with that speed to make the play. He came a long way to make a hard play look easy. And Dubon is retired one out. Could be a big loss for the Giants, right? Duggar is their real center fielder on right. the roster. I mean, they can play Yastrzemski in center. They can play Slater in center, but I mean, Duggar is the the best defensive center fielder they have. And they're already missing key pieces. Evan Longoria has been out. He's battling a a finger injury, had surgery, working his way back. Thomas Estella has been out. Lamont Wade has been out. 
Yeah. So guys who played huge roles for this Giants team last year. And that is. Hampered Gabe Kapler's ability to match up the way he likes. Slider off the plate to Casale, and it's one and one. Giants, though, are eight and four on the year in what has been a very competitive National League West early in the season. Not just the Dodgers and Giants and Padres, as you expected, but the Rockies are off to a very good start at eight and four. Mm -hmm. Giants came in here riding high off a three game sweep in Cleveland. Mets have uh, turned them away here. One and two to Casale with one out. And Carrasco with a nasty slider strikes him out. That's 11 straight now for Carrasco, who had a stretch in his first start of the year in Washington where he re retired 15 in a row. He gets on a roll. He starts really upping his tempo, getting it and throwing it, carving up lineups. So now we'll start his third time through the batting order, taking on Mike Yastrzemski. Yastrzemski had a bunt hit in the first inning, grounded out into the shift in the second. Escobar stays in on the grass after that bunt hit. And a knee high fastball, nothing in one. Well, that's. Had a little bobble with their starting pitching last night. Chris Bassett said, I am not taking anything positive out of that game. <laughs> and yet, even with that, through 13 games, third best start for the starters. That's driven to left center, cutting across his cannon to pick it off, and that retires the side. 12 in a row set down by Carlos Carrasco. We're halfway through in the final game of this homestand. Met fleet at 5 to 1. By your tri state Cadillac dealers, your home for the Mets on the radio is WCBS News Radio 880 and anywhere on the Odyssey app. Diamondbacks don't score much, but they've pitched really well. And they did score 11 runs yesterday in D.C. Nolan Arenado broke up a scoreless game in the ninth against the Marlins yesterday with a home run. Arenado's off to a red hot start. Offensively and defensively. Oh, and the Phillies! Mets get the rematch with the Phillies, this one at home after taking. Two of three in Philadelphia. Lindor is already having a big day in his first DH assignment of the year a home run and a single. He scored two runs. No, he's still good. Finally tries to pop him inside. One and two. Well, here's home run number four on the season. Down inner half. And that's up the middle. Crawford can't get this one, and Lindor has got his third hit of the day. Three for three as the DH. Amazing what a half a day off will do for a guy. <laughs> Well, interesting how all the other left hand hitters Crawford's up the middle and Crawford playing more in a traditional position and Lindor hits it where he isn't. I was going to say ain't but Gary would have cringed. Nah. It's an informal broadcast Keith. It's obvious that Di Sclafani does not have his best stuff, but if you look at that bullpen, McGee, Rogers, Brebbia, and Leon have all thrown two days in a row. Some like Brebbia, 47 pitches in two days. Well, in the first three games of the series, Giants starters have not gone deep. Cobb four and a third, Webb three and two thirds, Rodon went five last night. Well, this has got to be this is his third start where he has not pitched well. Mm. And he's getting he's been hit hard here and it's got to be a concern for the Giants because it's a 13 game winner last year. A little over 12 innings Keith 21 hits allowed. McNeil hit a long double his last time up barely missed a home run to fairly distant right center. By the way the updated numbers on Lindor for his career now is a D.H. 
24 for 51. That's a 470 batting average with seven home runs in the 51 at bats. And you got the polar bear who's kind of yeah. liking, liking DH and lately too. Well, we knew going into this year that aesthetics aside, that the DH would be a good thing for the Mets. They have the right personnel for it, an older team, spread it around, get everybody some rest, and it has certainly worked out that way so far. Look, Showalter was asked today about Robinson Cano and how he balances getting Cano going with his age and having the respect for what he's accomplished in his career. But if everybody else is on point on this team, I think Cano plays less and less. Mm -hmm. I think that's just the reality of it. Scalfani hasn't walked about it today. In fact, he's only walked one in his 12 and a third innings. But he's behind McNeil three and one, and he uh, gets a generous strike for a full count. It's the same pitch he threw to Nimmo with the same result. Mm. Alfonso Marquez, the home plate umpire and crew chief. Door at first and nobody out. Three and two to McNeil. Long hold for De Scalfani. Lindor runs. McNeil strikes out. The throw by Casale right on target for the strike him out. Throw him out double play. Boy, Casale throws well. Fourth strikeout for De Scalfani. Casale got it right on the money. Two six on the caught stealing. Boy, he gets rid of this fast. Perfect throw. Crawford had the ball waiting. Casale's played well in his two starts. So that helps out Di Sclafani trying to wind his way through the fifth inning. Two out with Alonzo at the plate. And Pete takes one low and away for ball one. Alonzo has struck out and hit a bullet to short with the infield playing in that Crawford was able to handle. What did he get McNeil on a changeup? Or is a sinker? I think it was a sinker. Pete's three hits yesterday one bullet and two well placed grounders down the right of the bloop and a grounder down the right field line. Uh, 86 miles an hour to McNeil. So change. That's maybe. Change. Yeah. change up. Then a good one. To Alonzo. Scafani's given up a lot of hits, but he hasn't thrown a lot of pitches today, so I think the game counter will want him to go as deep as he can at the yes. this game. Giants up the short trip after this game. They're going to Washington. The Mets up the long trip. They're going to Arizona. And the curveball misses up and in. Three and two. Second straight full count for Di Scalfani. So Ron Di Scalfani has a career year last year, wins 13, yeah. and then he with the slider, and he wants the offseason work on the curve. And Alonzo takes one the other way for a base hit. He had a couple of hits to right field yesterday, and another one this afternoon, and that's the Mets' ninth hit of the day. Right side of the infield, wide open with two strikes. It's begging for a base hit. Nice. So now Escobar, who hit his first home run as a man in the second inning, struck out though with two in scoring position in the third. Takes it inside from Di Scalfani. Oh, Di Scalfani wanted that one. First pitch of the game was a fastball in that same spot. He didn't get it. Yeah, 
Anthony DiSclefani, born in Freehold, New Jersey. Does not know Bruce Springsteen, as far as we know. In fact, his nickname is Disco. Well, that would be anti <laughs> Springsteen. Bruce went to Freehold High School. DiSclefani went to Colts Neck. It's a little more a little, uh, very up, posh. Upscale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Started out his career with the Marlins. Spent most of it with the Reds and now in his second year with the Giants at age 31. And Escobar takes and that's a strike. <laughs> well, we've seen some uh, interesting ball and strike calls in this inning. Well, I think he called one the first pitch I thought was a strike according to the box. That is ball four. So Escobar, who is in the top five in the league in walks, walks for the twelfth time this year. First of the day for De Scalfani. And now Mark Cano who's working on a big day. There's his first at bat on a slider. Just didn't get it out enough. Look at the eye on the ball up the middle. Let go with one hand. Stayed back, hands back, beautifully done. Now here they come in with a sinker in. It's not a bad pitch right there. That's good hitting. His right hand, his knuckles are facing the pitcher. So he good, pulls it in. Pretty good plate coverage. Junior Marte up in the Giants' bullpen. So the Mets trying to add to a 5 1 lead. Two out and two on for Canna. He fouls off that first pitch slider, nothing and one. Good cut right there. Healthy rip. Like he was trying to go to right center with that. Oh, look at that batting average. Batting average is good. The on base percentage is better. 500 on base percentage. What's even nicer is that coming back from the COVID list, he hasn't lost what he had in Washington and Philadelphia. I mean, he got a base hit against Tyler Rogers yesterday. Very few right hand batters are going to do that this year. Curveballs in for a strike and it's 0 2. So at second, Escobar at first with two out. Esclafani about to throw his 24th pitch of the inning. Grand counter rolls over one down to third, and Wilmer will go the short way to get the force. That retires the side. That's strand a pair in the fifth. On to the sixth we go. Carrasco back to the mound with a 5 1 lead. What a pretty sight. Sixth inning, Brandon Belt. Takes a strike from Carlos Carrasco. Belts 0 for 2, struck out and grounded out. 1 for 12 in this series. The 1 was a home run last night on his birthday. Belt, Ruff, and Peterson, 2, 3, and 4 in the order against Carrasco, has made it look fairly easy today. This is down with a changeup, and it's 1 and 1. Carrasco has retired 12 consecutive hitters. His second double digit streak in his first three starts. One caught Nito on the way back. The longest streak of Carrasco's career came in 2019 for the Indians. He retired 19 in a row. Five scoreless innings his last time out. Five innings, one run. The difference today is he's thrown like through only 60 pitches through five innings. That last start against Arizona, 82 mm. to get through five. Today he has not walked about her, struck out five. One, two coming to Belt, and it's pulled on the ground down to Alonzo. He'll take it himself. One out. Let's check in with the studio for a game break brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Here's Sal Licata. Sal? Why are we showing Yankee Howard? New York. All right, Sal. Here we're in the sixth inning. Mets lead the Giants five to one. Thirteen straight retired by Carrasco as he takes on Darren Ruff, who takes a fastball for a strike. Ruff is 
Been caught looking and flied out. He's one for ten in this series. A lot of the Giants' bats have been rather cold to start the year. Stremski and Roth and Homer Flores. A lot of hitting going on other than Belt and Peterson. Our OPS is 100 points less than it was last year. I know it's only a few games, but they were number one in the National League. Gary said it the first game in here. They won 107 games, and everybody was waiting for them to fall apart, and they didn't. Well, just about everybody had a career year last year. So the question is, can they repeat that? I mean, got, got like rough, right? He, he was a journeyman player, went to Korea for a few years, came back. And he's had some you know, a couple of nice platoon type years. Slater the same. Yastrzemski the same. These are journeyman guys who had great years, and then you know, star more star type players like Belt and Crawford at an advanced stage in their career had career years. That's pulled foul. I mean, you just don't expect that confluence of events all in the same season, but that that's how you win 107 games. Here we go. Led the league in home runs, set a franchise record for home runs, second only to the Blue Jays in the major league. They're 31 and 17 in one run games. There are 43 come from behind wins. On and on. Swing and a miss. Got with a slider. Strikeout number six for Carrasco is now set down 14 in a row. Wow. This ball's a foot and a half outside. Set up with that fastball in. I mean, we've raved about the Mets starting pitching over the first two weeks of the season, and there are certain things you can anticipate. You can anticipate the brilliance of Max Scherzer. You can anticipate that Chris Bassett off a real good year last year in Oakland is going to come over here and thrive. But you didn't know about Tyler McGill in his first full season. You didn't know about Carrasco coming back from injury. In comes Canna. He's got the fly ball from Peterson. 15 straight from Carrasco has been nothing short of brilliant. To the bottom of the sixth. Tomorrow, the Mets begin their series in Arizona. It's a 9:40 Eastern Time first pitch. Our coverage begins at 9 o'clock tomorrow night, right here on SNY. David Peterson will start the opening game of that series tomorrow night. Zach Gallen goes for the Diamondbacks. Probably Trevor Williams on Saturday. They could slot Taiwan Walker in there, but I think it's probably too soon. And then Tyler McGill comes back Sunday, which means that Max Scherzer gets the extra day of rest coming off the doubleheader and will pitch Monday in St. Louis. Giants go to the bullpen as we go to the bottom of the sixth. There's Max coming off his one hit performance Tuesday night. Black coffee. Travis Jankowski leads off against Junior Marte, who throws a slider for a strike, nothing in one. Junior came in in game two of the doubleheader, struck out the side in the eighth. This is just his third major league appearance. This really was impressive the other night. Jankowski grounds one on the right side, and Estrada takes care of Travis one away. So Anthony DiSclefani. <laughs> oh. First game. Got their hands full. Got to see a couple of home runs. And that was enough to knock the socks off. He's confident. Thinks the game's in the bed. Yeah. Back. Here's Guillaume. Got a hit and run single back in the second. Fly down in the fourth, one for two. So Di Sclafani over five innings through 83 pitches gave up five runs nine hits a walk four strikeouts gave up a couple of home runs. So three starts into the season and Di Sclafani's yet to hit his stride and you know by contrast today the guy who had the huge season for the Giants last year Kevin Gosman who left as a free agent is pitching for Toronto. Against the Red Sox and dominating through the first four innings. 
Matthew Stefani now still hasn't beaten the Mets in seven starts now and counting. As Gabe. Every organization has to make measured judgments, right, about how deep to go into their payroll to get the desired result. And the Giants have taken a pretty firm stand about not giving long term contracts to starting pitchers. Gosman wound up getting a five year deal with the Blue Jays, and the Giants just weren't going to go there. Yeah. If it wasn't for the Blue Jays, there would have been a couple other clubs. Guillaume draws a walk, so he's on base for the second time. But it's not easy to find pitchers that can strike out 227. Right now, they did you know, replace Gosman by bringing in a, a star in Carlos Rodon, who we saw last night on a two-year deal, and they brought in Alex Cobb, who's a more of the back of the rotation guy on a two-year deal. But you're also counting on a guy like Di Sclafani, who had a breakout season last year, to do that again. And of course you're counting on Logan Webb to be the ace that he appeared to be the second half of last year. Here's Nito who drove in a run with a sacrifice fly and trying to lay down a bunt with the third baseman Flores playing back and that one caught Kurt Casale. Nito can commiserate. I mean Rodon this is the first time he pitched against the Mets and he was as advertised. I mean, just uh, as impressive a fastball as we've seen all season long. I haven't seen a left-hander throw this hard in quite some time. Mets knew the fastball was coming. They still could not turn on the fan. It's 95 pitches last night for Rodon, 77 fastball. I mean, normally he's got a great slider, and he didn't have great command of it last night, probably because of the weather, and so he just stuck to number one, and it served him well. Eight strikeouts over five innings. And he was overpowering. It's a challenge against the Giants bullpen late yesterday. Got a run in the seventh, a run in the eighth. That short circuited by a base running mistake, a line drive that Wilmer Flores made a great grab for. So they battled right to the end. But Rodon put the Giants in good shape. Out of the dirt by Casale, one and two to Nito. Brandon Nimmo on deck. Giants one run, three hits. The Mets five runs and nine hits were in the sixth. Nito foul tips the slider for strike three. And Marte's got his first strikeout, two down. Quick work of Nito right there. So two out now, Nimmo. He's gone 0 for 3 today. Bag blowing across the infield. Now foul ball. <laughs> now up the line, back into fair territory. Does anybody want to go grab it? Who's going to get it? It's going to be the pitcher. Uh, the bat boy is going to help as well. When the paper the plastic bag goes up the line, never assume it's going to stay foul. <laughs> Make sure you keep it foul. Is that what you're saying? Well, you don't want to do it like Taiwan Walker did in Pittsburgh last year. Right. Make sure that it is foul when you keep it foul. You know, it had nothing to do with the way his season transpired last year, but it's almost like that game, right, right out of the All Star yeah. break, was, and that play was like the the demarcation point. For Taiwan season last year after his all star first half. Oh. 
No. Knuckle protector. Yeah. Pretty significant pad right there. Oh, I don't. That's something you'd have to get used to, right? I mean, you didn't even wear gloves. Certainly couldn't hit with that. Have to get used to hitting with the elbow armor too. Didn't hurt Barry Bonds. No. <laughs> Doesn't hurt Pete. So you're saying if you played and you're allowed to wear the elbow armor, you would certainly have worn it. Uh, I'll say this. Rusty over dinner one time, Mr. Staub said that he would have worn the elbow pad if he if, if it was in his time. I probably would have probably put it on. I mean, I, my yeah. elbow. I mean, it wasn't illegal when you played, was it? No. Just nobody did it. No one did it. I don't think anybody thought of it. And Ron Hunt is famous for wearing the pad on his ribs. Right. You know, like a flak jacket. A flak jacket, right? Because well, he got hit by a pitch 50 times in one season. Well, yeah. Like a, the great story that Carlton told me was he had a 5 nothing lead or 6 nothing lead in the eighth inning and cruising. Hunt was leading, leading off, and he's like, I had it all working. I didn't want. I knew he was going to cost me around eight pitches, so I just drilled him. <laughs> Take your base. <laughs> First pitch. <laughs> you know, Earl Hershiser says something similar to that back when there used to be an intentional walks where you had to throw four balls. I'd rather just throw a curveball and hit the guy. Yeah. It's just a lot easier. <laughs> Yeah. Mo works a full count, so Giorme may be in motion. Marte with a 3 2, and he missed with the slider for ball four. So a couple of walks in the inning for Marte, and Nemo's aboard. And Francisco Lindor, DH Deluxe, will come to the plate with two men on. Lindor getting a day to rest his legs has not rested his arms. Home run his first time up. A single to left center in the third and a base it up the middle in the fifth. Raising his average to 320 for the year raising his OPS to 1073 in what has been a great first two weeks for the Mets shortstop. Uh, something wrong with the pitch com. I need to pitch calm. Runner on second base. Here we go. Jeez. Why wasn't he just wearing it in the first? Well, he thought uh, he struck out three the other night. Wasn't he going to have a base runner? Yeah, I just got to figure he'd go one, two, three again. Maybe they were charging it. You can just tell by his body language because Sally's not feeling this pitch calm. He had some trouble with it the other night. Yeah. That whole deal of. Flashing the sign by pushing the button, then you got to look up to see if the pitcher shakes, and then you got to look down. Again. You got to cup your ear, like. Uh... See, for those of us who are hard of hearing, that would be really <laughs> tough, right? He's now he's got to give the thumb up to make sure that he doesn't get double crossed. I mean, part of the reason for the pitch gum is to save time. I don't think it's necessarily working that way <laughs> early on. Now, you know, people will get used to it. Yeah, big old thing out, but. Definitely not moving the game along faster. Well, R and D is going to have to turn up the volume at some point. I mean, that's the first thing. I like McCann's idea because he has it inside his chest protector, mm. and you know he has to push the buttons blindly by feel, but at least he can look at the pitcher while he's doing it, yeah. so he can get the shake off. I mean, Casali really is looking down to get it right, and then looks up. Gives thumbs up, and then you might have to do that three or four times if you get shaken yeah. a few times. So that just really slows down the process. Okay. So let me see. Figure this out. Uh, and that, now Casali's having trouble hearing. It's supposed to play in his helmet as well. Slapped on the ground. Wilmer ranging wide and gets it to mm. Crawford for the force play, and Lindor makes it out for the first time today. On to the seventh we go. Five to one Mets. Carlos Carrasco starting the seventh inning. Gets a knee high fastball over to Brandon Crawford. The 71 pitches through six for Carrasco, who last recorded an out in the seventh inning last August. 
coincidentally enough against the Giants. Oh, the strike. You're getting your number retired, maybe someday. A statue 60 feet 6 inches away from that one. Giants have finally confirmed that Stephen Duggar left the game with a left oblique injury, as we suspect. Oh, it's a shame. Those sit-ups are overrated. <laughs> he didn't get it because he does sit-ups. <laughs> One, two coming. And Crawford goes down swinging on the changeup. Seventh strikeout for Carrasco. He's now he's now retired 16 in a row. Time for another game break. Let's check in with the studio in Sal Licata. Sal? Here. I got 15 in a row. I got 15 in a row. Am I right or wrong? Now, Wilmer Flores. One more at a base hit back in the second. So Carrasco, in his first three starts this year, retired 15 straight Nationals, hmm. and now he's retired 16 straight Giants, the two longest streaks by a Met uh, by a Met this season. He's sharp. He's looked terrific. Behind the bag, sliding stop by McNeil, and he throws out Flores two down. Nice play by McNeil, moving left. This is a clinic by Carrasco today. Ability to throw that slider, change up the right handed hitters, again with the breaking pitch. Really has used his fastball for show this season and has relied on that slider, curveball occasionally, and change up to retire hitters. And boy, he is working at a high level. Tyro Estrada, last man to reach against Carrasco. He's singled through the hole in the right to drive in the Giants run of the second at that point the Giants had first and second nobody out in a tie game. The next man was Duggar he left in the middle of the bad bat because of injury Dubon came on tried to bunt and struck out and Carrasco hasn't allowed anything since. Mm -hmm. To a no doubt of Estrada. <clears throat> this is just a superb performance. Trying to become the second Met pitcher to get through seven innings. Scherzer did it on Tuesday night. Not even a hint of action on the Mets bullpen behind him. And Estrada tried to stop it, but he went around. Mm -hmm. A slider off the plate, two and one. Let's see. Close. You never think they swim. <laughs> In the air to left field, and Canna barely has to move. Side retired. 18 straight retired by Carlos Carrasco. What a day for the man called Cookie. Stretch time, 5 to 1. And SNY is brought to you by Northwell. When they raise women's health, they raise everyone. By the New York Lottery, get out there and play. And by your tri state Audi dealers. On the season two premiere of Mets Perspective, Mets prospect Mark Vientos talks about what he's looking to improve this season and how close he believes he is to making his major league debut on SNY's digital series, Mets Perspective. Check it out now on SNY.tv. <laughs> Work into the roll, use the Wrapper to open the roll. Here, are we allowed to work those the hot dog? Put it in the bun, get the mustard, wrap it all up with the hot dog. Are we allowed to have that in our in our uh, diet here? Without the bun. How about gluten free? Without the bun. <laughs> Just pretend that you're celebrating Passover. <laughs> Not allowed to have leavened bread this week. Maybe get some matzo with your. <laughs> Hot dog.
Right hander Tyler Beatty on to pitch for the Giants as we go to the bottom of the seventh, his first appearance in the series. Jeff McNeil leads off in the home seventh, and he drives one to right center field, cutting across Yastrzemski to pick it off. Another hard hit ball by McNeil, hit went off the fence in right center for a double back in the third. One pitch and one hard out for Beatty. And now Pete Alonso. Base it to right field his last time up. Alonzo takes a strike from 28 year old Tyler Beatty, who's from a place near and dear to Ronnie's heart. That's right. He says Worcester, Mass., where he was born, but he grew up in Auburn, which is the town next town over. He, he went to your high school? I thought he did. No, he um, he went to Auburn High and then Lawrence oh. Academy. I thought he did, but. Um, Wasn't a St. John's kid. Auburn, Mass., is famous for Robert Goddard. Uh, people think the inventor of or the space rocket. All I know is when I see Worcester in a guy's bio, who am I going to think of but you? That's right. That's right. Not many of us, I'll tell you that. And that's lined up the middle, and Beatty did well to get out of the way. Of that bullet by Alonzo for his second hit of the day. No, Pete continues to get his knocks. God, that, that has got to be scary if you're a pitcher. I'm sorry. You're too mad at yourself for missing a spot to, yep. to yep. it to affect you too much. So two batters, two ropes from McNeil and Alonzo, and now Escobar. Escobar homered his first time up today, his first as a Met. Since then, he struck out and walked. Ball that didn't get in and up and up, and he just clobbered. It was a changeup, excuse me, my mistake. Lindor homer to the first, Escobar homer to the second, and the Mets were off to a fast start. Beatty throws mm. the fastball by Escobar, one and two. Escobar is starting to feel it now. It was a big rip right there. He pulled off that one, looking for something to pull and hit out of the ballpark, but the ball ran away from him. 28 home runs a year ago for. Diamondbacks and the Brewers. Yeah, call homecoming this weekend for Escobar going back to Arizona where he spent four years. Two and two now to Eduardo. We're Canna on deck. Players will be looking for another free meal from Eduardo going back to us. Hey, after buying <laughs> dinner for 70 at Fogo de Chao, I'm not sure he's going back to that game plan again. Oh, and he gets the curveball for strike three call. That backdoor hook, that was a good one. So Beatty with his first strike out, two out. Another Beatty first round draft pick out of Vanderbilt. One of that chain of Vanderbilt pitchers who have had such great success at the big league level. Too many to keep count now, right? Oh, yeah. David Price was kind of at the leading edge of that, mm. and they've just flowed like water ever since. There's Canna, who's two for three, is the biggest hit in this game. Mets were up three to one in the third. It looked like they were about to bypass an opportunity. They had second and third, and nobody out. Alonzo grounded out. Escobar struck out, but then Canna, first pitch swinging. Pulled a base hit into left against Di Scalfani, drove home two, and Carrasco has taken it from there. Retiring 18 in a row. And uh, Carrasco.
Velasco having gotten through seven will get the opportunity to continue on. There is nobody throwing in the Mets bullpen. Eighty two pitches. What a different game this would feel like if it was three one right. Mm -hmm. the last two years for the Giants after starting 22 games for them in 2019. We were considering him as a possible starter this weekend but pitching in relief today. And he falls behind on Canna three and one. You know it's interesting with the double header you have to find another pitcher right to cover from McGill and Max that gives them an extra day but also gives Carrasco an extra day so he'll probably pitch the last game in St. Louis on five days rest not four. Maybe one of the reasons that they're still with him although he's been so great. That's probably going to plug Trevor Williams in to make the start Saturday in Arizona to make up for the doubleheader. And a three hopper for Crawford he gets the force that retires the side and that sends us off to the eighth Carrasco heading back to the mound He'll be the first bad pitcher to throw a pitch in the eighth this year. His team has played a terrific game today led by the guy on the mound Carlos Carrasco who becomes the first man to throw a pitch as a starter in the eighth inning. Joely Rodriguez will stay busy just in case Carrasco needs eighth inning help. Well you got the two left handers. Mauricio Dubon it's one of the hole backhanded by Guillaume the throw on a hop and Alonso came off the bag and Dubon is safe. I'll give the bond probably a base hit. Crow took Alonzo off the bat, pulled him off the bat. They're going to score that in the air on Guillaume. Uh, I don't. Well, yeah, the ball's hit hard. That ball's sinking into the runner. So that snaps the string of 18 in a row retired by Carrasco. One shy of the longest streak in his career. Louis not used to the, that long throw. He's predominantly been playing third and second base. Short throws. There's Kurt Casale, the number nine hitter. Last time Carrasco went beyond seven innings was May of 2019 with the Indians. And the last time he finished eight innings, it was September of 2018. Hmm. So it's been a while. I thought to keep a close eye out. Left hand hitter on deck in Yastrzemski. So this could be his last batter. Hold on the ground, a chance for two. Escobar to second, McNeil on the first, 5 4 3 double play. And now maybe Carrasco will get a chance to finish the eighth. Sure. Yes. I tell you what, Escobar's got solid hands. He has been impressive at third base. What the accuracy of his throws. Pitcher's best friend, Ronnie. Oh. Uh. It stands out because you know the Mets have not always thrown the ball pristinely on the infield this year but Escobar has Escobar you know you don't see the players uh, enough and you know you play used to be you play out of division you play you've, you know two home series and two away series but only one home and away you don't see enough of the players. I miss that. Escobar solid third baseman. Mike Ostremski is one for three today. A bunt hit back in the first. Three hits against Carrasco. All singles. All in the first two innings. Ostremski bunted for a hit. Flores had a solid single to right center. And Estrada found the hole on the right side. For a single that drove in a run. And that's been it. Now it's 3 0 to Yastrzemski. Mm. Roscoe has not walked about it today. 
Good time to step off the off the mound, Ron. Yeah, Collect just, yourself. Okay, come on, one more out. Go back to your uh, mechanics and just uh, pump three right down the middle. Well, not down the middle, but go right after him. It's his first three ball counts since the second inning. And there's a strike three and one. And the box score tomorrow, eight innings pitched, looks a lot better than seven and two thirds. <laughs> Seven and two thirds looks awfully good in this day and age. <laughs> I understand, but eight even looks better. See a lot of four and two thirds these days. The Strepsky cranks one deep, and that's going to fly out of here. Off the facing of the Coca Cola corner is Strepsky's first home run of the season, and that cuts the Mets' lead to five to two. And that's going to be all for Carlos Carrasco. So Carrasco fell behind. Is Strepsky hit a bolt? Now it's a three-run Met lead. And Buck Walter will take Carrasco out of the game and he will get an enormous ovation. Well, fastball down the middle, five to one lead, and here we go. Folks standing up for him. And I'm standing up. It's only his 15th start as a man, and Carlos Carrasco has delivered his signature performance. Wonderful. Amazing performance by Carlos Carrasco at one time retired 18 in a row but his day ended on this shot by Mike Yastrzemski. Well he fell behind 3 and 0 5 to 1 in the eighth inning with two outs and you don't want to walk anybody. It's pouring a fastball and Yastrzemski up to the task right down the middle Ron. Yeah there's there comes a time where the score dictates how you pitch and getting behind you had to go after him. Joely Rodriguez in to face Brandon Belt in what is now a five to two game. Rodriguez had his best outing his last time out on Tuesday. Yeah he looked good he was throwing strikes with all of his pitches. Got a one two three inning struck out Belt in that inning and he fires a fastball in for a strike and it's zero and two. So Carrasco goes seven and two thirds, two runs, four hits, no walks, seven strikeouts, a hit batsman, a home run, 91 pitches. His ERA through three starts this year is 1.47. Darren Ruff, the right hand hitter on deck. So Carrasco, the first Mets starter to make it into the eighth inning this year. And he winds up going seven and two thirds, the deepest he has pitched into any game since 2019. One two coming to belt, and he bloops one behind short. There's Escobar playing over there. Side retired. Carlos Carrasco, seven and two thirds, brilliant innings. Job well done. Five two Mets in the eighth. Community home runs fan of the game, Broden, who as of now has won a $50 gift card, Mets autograph, and Mets prize pack. Don't forget, receive 25 additional entries by donating $5 or more to No Kid Hungry. Home eighth inning, Mets up 5 to 2. Travis Jankowski leading off against Tyler Beatty. Well, Jankowski so far has been wonderful as a kind of a fill in player. Got an opportunity to play when Nimmo was down, he missed those games early. He's, he hasn't gotten any hits, but he scored a run. He's always in the middle of things. Let's change up just off the plate, and it's two and one. Luis Guillorme on deck, and then Tomas Nito, Edwin Diaz up in the bullpen, getting ready for what might be a save opportunity if the Mets don't score here in the eighth. Inside corner of strike. You know, both the Mets and the Giants starting pitching was in a great spot coming into this series. And the Mets have a chance to win three out of four. But not only that, they've gotten such great length out of their starters in this series that they have preserved their bullpen for the road trip coming up. Whereas the Giants starters all have gone five innings or less and they're in much less good shape heading into their next series and when they haven't gotten length from their starter they have like Sean Reed Foley yesterday got six outs. In the four game series the Mets got six innings out of McGill seven out of Scherzer six out of Bassett and now seven and two thirds 
out of Carrasco. And in this day and age, if you get six innings or more out of your starter yeah. every day, you're in great shape. You should check that Bassett went uh, six innings, but Sean Reed Foley picked up the bullpen by finishing the game. Yep. Well, those things are important too, and it's something that Buck and Jeremy Hefner have concentrated on this year, having relief pitchers go that second inning if they can. Eighth pitch coming to Jankowski, and he walked him. So Jankowski is aboard, leading off in the home eighth. Hang out with the best baseball insiders in New York as they break down today's Mets Giants series finale. Baseball night in New York. Presented by Tri State Cadillac dealers tonight at 6 p.m. only on SN. And then later tonight at 11. See, because there's not a night game, we don't have to say after the post game. Okay. It's strictly right at 11 o'clock, Ico Sports Night. Of all the day's sports news, everything New York sports. As Giorme has had a nice day at the plate. Hit and run single in the second, a walk in the sixth, one for two. In the ninth, the Giants are due to send up Ruff, Peterson, and Crawford, three, four, and five in the batting order. Diaz right now just standing around in the bullpen. A drag bunt by Giorme. Can the pitcher get there? He cannot. Little indecision between Belt and Beatty about who was going to play it. And Giorme with a beautifully placed butt hit. What made this great is that he had backspin on it like a wedge. The first baseman, Belt, has got a charge. And oh, a little right. bit of indecision by Beatty. You're right, Ryan. That ball took a sharp right turn. <laughs> it did. Beatty wants to get it and he hesitated and then once he hesitated he's not going to beat the runner. He's grabbed with a bare hand. Just see him though he tried to reach back and tag. Mm -hmm. What you do when you're covering first in this situation you're not going to beat him to the bag. So sometimes you reach to try to get him. Look at the spin on this. That's the crazy. Per perfectly placed bunt. The only way that play can be made the pitcher's got to scoop that up in all one motion try to beat the player to the bag. Lay oh. it down Ziggy. <laughs> Great spin. Let's see if Nito's bunting here. First and second, nobody out. Nimmo on deck. Corners pinching in. Yeah, he's bunting all right. And stabs oh. at it, and that gets. Oh, that comes down. Flex off Casale. Off the inner thigh, it hurts. That's twice that Nito has got him with an attempted bunt. Mm. What happens is that the catcher rises with the pitch as the player is trying to bunt it, which makes him more exposed. Mm. Back to the bunt play. I was saying that if you can't beat them to the bag, you reach out and try to tag the runner. Sometimes you can get them before they get there. But oh, Giorme was already there. Got him on the hand. Yeah. He did. It was a lot closer than it looked with the naked eye. So Sally back behind the plate. 0 and 1 to Nito and Bunts. And the Giants look for the bunt. Bunt's still got to be on. It's big two runs Looks out. Looks like there. they're going to run the wheel play though. Looks Crawford edging toward third, and the bunt is down. They have a play at third, and so the wheel is successful. The five-six fielder's choice erasing the speedy Jankowski for the first out. Boy, I can't remember mm. the last time I saw the wheel executed properly and effectively. Well. Crawford was already the way over the second baseman. What, what's different about this wheel? Crawford's all way over to the left. You gotta, gotta get a bigger lead. The second baseman wasn't that close, but it, either way, that's how that play is designed. If Jankowski, he could have taken off with Crawford and just trying to steal, steal third base. Right, because Estrada, a lot of times when they run the wheel, they'll run the second baseman in behind yeah. the runner at second, but that wasn't the case there. Yeah, you would have thought with. 
with Crawford. So oh. that one kicks away, and that'll enable Diorme to get over to third. Good heads up. Holding at first is Nito. It's a wild pitch. And Sally a bit used and abused. Yeah. There. Go back to the bunt play. Because Belt was charging, Estrada's got to cover first. So that leaves the middle open. As soon as Crawford went, um, Flores made the wrong play because he was too aggressive. That left it open. He could have taken and just stole third. Mm -hmm. Infield comes in now against Nimmo. They don't feel confident in their ability to turn the double play. So they're in with first and third and one out. And Nimmo slugs one out to right. That'll get a run in at least. Back goes Yastrzemski. It's over his head. Giorme is in. Nito will have to stop at second. It'll go as a long single for Nimmo. And the Mets stretch the lead to six to two. And that ball left the bat. It looked like it was going to be caught. So Nito, I think, was going back to tag no, it first. Can't tag. You got to go halfway. Yeah. Nito hasn't got the wheels to be uh, tagging up, so he's got to get halfway. That ball was ripped. Okay, he's going halfway, and he gets caught. Uh, he didn't. He gets caught half and half, and, and that's he, that's even worse. Oh well. So now Lindor has had the big day as the DH, three for four, including a home run back in the first inning. It's got the Mets started, and he flies one foul down the left side. Flores giving chase, but that'll be beyond his reach. Let's go back to the wheel play. All right. So look at the second baseman. So you, could, there's no one there to cover him. He could have maybe got, Jankowski could have got a bigger lead. You can get as big a lead as the second baseman is away from second base and another five feet. He can't beat you back there on a pickup. And that he was just thrown out by maybe a step. Right. Another two steps would have been the difference. Mm. Nito at second, Nemo at first with one out. Curveball from Beatty stays outside, a ball and a strike. Nobody throwing in the Giants bullpen. Beatty being asked to finish this eighth inning. Little tapper to the right side. Estrada's only play is to first. And they get Lindor for the second out as the runners move up. Nito to third, Nemo to second, two out. Like it's still going to be Edwin Diaz coming in to pitch the ninth inning, even with the save situation now gone. Perhaps if you get a base hit here and stretch it to eight to yeah, two, do that, you, do you switch off? That might change it. No Bucks got to be thinking about that. Love to have Diaz available fresh tomorrow. Here's McNeil. Long double, one for four. And he pulls one to the right side where Estrada's there to catch the line drive and end the inning. Mets settle for just the one run in the bottom of the eighth. Trying to win their fourth straight series, three outs away. Diaz coming in. All of a piece. Nissan numbers for Edwin Diaz. You see so far, so good. Darren Ruff will lead off the top of the ninth for the Giants. That's getting their first look at a team that won 107 games last year. And on the verge of winning three out of four. Ruff is 0 for 3, struck out twice and flied out. That's will have a chance to win three out of four. Buck has a chance to go 3-0. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yesterday, at least with an asterisk, not on his permanent record. <laughs> and Ruff chases a slider, and it's one and two. And Ruff has really been chasing the sliders up from the right handers. Just the way these things happen to fall. 
It's the sixth outing for Diaz this year. Five of the six have been in nine save situations. And that fastball just missed a little high. Two and two to rough with Peterson on deck. And he went around on the slider, strike three. Diaz has the first down of the night. See ya. Waving bye bye. <laughs> Talking smack early. After we're done here, don't forget to keep it tuned for points bet post game. Gary Apple, Todd Zeal will have all the analysis, the interviews, the highlights, the conversation, the breakdown. Opposite field fly ball from Peterson snagged by Canna and just like that the Giants are down to their final out and Jock takes an 0 for 4 on his 30th birthday. And it's left to Brandon Crawford. Well it's been quite a celebratory homestand for the Mets. It began with the unveiling of the Tom Seaver statue on Friday. Jackie Robinson Day, tribute to Gil Hodges on Saturday, honor for Jay Horwitz on Sunday, and the Mets trying to go five and two on this homestand. Crawford fouls one off the left side, nothing and one. Fans have come out too in some really bad weather to support their team. Hopefully by the time the Mets get back from Arizona and St. Louis, it'll be a little more temperate. The Mets have made a statement early. Pay attention to us. I think they've got people's attention. Too high to Crawford a ball and a strike, 100 miles an hour from Edwin. You know, you play a big series against a real tough team, the Giants. Then you go to Arizona, so a team that's going to have a tougher year, and then on to St. Louis. So the schedule's nice. Good back foot slider, and it's one and two. And the Giants are down to their final strike. One two to Crawford. Strike three called and the ball game is over. Diaz finishes it with a one two three ninth. The Mets win their fourth consecutive series to start the year to go to 10 and 4. Carlos Carrasco with his best outings of Met goes 7 and 2 thirds for the win. Lindor and Escobar Homer and the Mets with a brilliant first two weeks of the season finish it off with a 6 to 2 win to close out the homestand. Well they manufactured some runs they're playing terrific defense the bunt late that was a big sixth run that got that rally going they scored in the eighth the hit and run early in the game played it a third run the little things they're doing they're playing solid defense and Ron the name of the game is pitching there really is Mets starting pitching now it's only given up 18 runs in 14 games so far and Carrasco might have been the best effort of all. Harford caught flat footed took the fastball Diaz with a couple of strikeouts in the ninth. Their pitchers didn't walk about it today. They struck out nine. Carrasco.